Dr. Yadi. Dear Madam Chair, Ranking, and distinguished members of Aging Committee, thank you for inviting and give me this opportunity to discuss the challenges regarding this aging population in the United States. My name is Mehta Riyadi. I'm a board-certified geriatrician and educator. I'm re representing myself as a physician who has treated and managed and continues to treat thousands of senior Americans. As Ralph said at the beginning, today the number of Americans aged 65 and older is approximately 49 million. Currently, we are about 7,000 geriatricians in practice in the United States. We need about 20,000 geriatricians to staff up the, for the need we have right now. This aging population is faced with multiple challenges toward the paths of healthy aging, and I'm giving my opinion as a geriatrician about these challenges. Number one, lack of expert in the field of geriatric medicine and gerontology. Unfortunately, our healthcare and education system haven't been designed to train enough senior care providers who can specifically manage seniors as we age or physiology change, and therefore it is crucial to be managed by healthcare providers who have been educated and trained in this field. In the US, 80% of seniors have at least one chronic condition. 40% of the seniors take at least five medications, not taking into account of over-the-counter supplements and herbal remedies. They see many different specialists and prescribe number of the different medications through each, which can result in polypharmacy or over-medication and drug cascade syndrome. Next challenge is lack of scientific and research-backed medical information regarding healthy aging. Despite of the fact that we live in an era of advanced technology with massive amount of information on the subject of the aging is available, the validity of much of such information is highly questionable. For example, misleading marketing campaign at every corner are enticing our seniors to take drastic measures, such as taking unregulated vitamins and supplements or undergo harmful diets to live longer and healthier. This is regardless of the fact that the scientific data collected over many years indicates such over-the-counter supplement and drastic diets are not contributing to better health and could even be detrimental to our health. Next challenge, the elderly are becoming more racially and ethnically diverse. In 2014, about 15% of people aged 65 older live in home where a language other than English was spoken. Currently, we lack the resources to address the challenges of this growing ethnic and racial group. Next challenge, which is the most important one, we live in an anti-aging society. In traditional society, the elderly hold an exceptional status in their community. They are considered very sage, are highly respected, and have a central position in the family and their community. In the US, that is not true. Older adults are often forced out of the workforce and replaced by cheaper and unskilled labor. They usually retire to the solitude of their houses. They become isolated and lonely, and as a consequence, they develop depression and cognitive impairment. Later, they will be institutionalized and set aside by the society they built and the children they raise. They can even be easily mistreated, cheated, and taken advantage of. Next challenge, lack of infrastructure and resources, or seniors face lack of appropriate resources in areas of transportation, affordable housing, senior centers, organized and affordable social activities, and qualified healthcare centers. And the next, financial difficulties. A large number of seniors are living in poverty. Often they are faced with hard choice between paying their rent or mortgage, buying the many medication they cannot survive without it, or purchasing food. Too often they become not only financially, but also physically dependent on their children, which are known as the sandwich generation. Next is robotic mentality. We live in modern society where more is considered better. This kind of mentality tell us that for every single problem, there should exist a quick, quick fix, even there is no logic behind it. Modern medicine dictate that things should be fixed with either medications or intervention or procedure. But in reality, of a statistic do not support this. And the last challenge is Medicare expenditure. As the Medicare system is set up today, it doesn't pay for medical necessary services, which can have tremendous impact toward a better physical and mental quality of life for older adults. Thank you again for this opportunity, and I will be happy to answer any question and discuss about how we can fix that. Thank you very much, Doctor.
Mrs. Hill, welcome.